All right, welcome back. The conversation here in studio never ends. In fact, we need to give the lawyers the right to respond. And even as you, as you do so, you know, um, Steve from the commercial break to bring our audience up to speed, we were just talking about some of the hiccups within our judiciary system that just drags this one corruption. You have an individual who has um, not one, not two, eight and above cases in terms of what they're being charged, um, the defense team, the lawyers, ATC, but also... The fact that till today, in 2019, our courts here in Nairobi are not digitized. The efficiency of doing these things is also affecting the war on graft. Wouldn't you not say so, Steve and Duncan? There's a shared problem, <clears throat> but you can't locate the problem until mm -hmm. you know how the war on corruption mm -hmm. is layered mm -hmm. in terms of division of labor. Let me take you through. You need the president's support. He has expressed an, an equivocal support. Mm -hmm. So he creates a conducive political environment. Very important. You need the investigative agencies, and Kenyans right now can see the efficiency of the DCI, ESCC, in terms of executing their mandate when there's political support. You need the prosecutorial uh, uh, arm or responsibility. And the DPP has arraigned not one, not two, not three, but six governors. Six governors. Mm -hmm. Listen, Samson Lennon Kulal is in court. Mm. Governor Bado is in court, although on a related issue, murder. Waititu is in court. Ojamong is in court. No. Songo is in court. Former Governor like Kidero is in court. court. You were complaining for uh, in action against Big Fish. He's prosecuting these people. This isn't how they mandate to, to convict. Correct. Let's go to the judiciary. Judiciary can only work the anti-corruption the, the anti -corruption and economic crimes act provides that corruption cases must be finalized within two years. So judiciary must work within, term, within that timeline. Show me which case that you're saying is drug in Arima, which is already outside that timeline. Because by law, those cases must be finalized within the timeline. Where is the missing link? I'll show you. When the judiciary makes a pronouncement in Lenon Kulal's case, which applied to Governor Waititu, it was a, that once you, once you are charged with a corruption-related offense, mm -hmm. you breach public trust, which is integral to that office. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're not fit to return. Mm -hmm. The MCAs, I'm not locating where the problem is. The MCAs ought to have picked it up to impeach the governor. Right now, Governor Sonko is not fit to serve, as per the jurisprudence from Mumbi Ngugi. It's not the DPP saying, it's not a lawyer saying, it, it, you know, in terms of interpretation of the law, the judiciary is the last word. When they say, do not return, don't come out and start manipulating that judgment by saying, I don't need the office, I don't need to run the county from the designated offices. The office of the, of the governor mm -hmm. is not a building, mm -hmm. it's the execution of that mandate. You are not allowed to run the affairs of that county from wherever, from your house, from the office. So MCS ought to have been seized of that matter and said, why do we need a governor who can't execute his mandate and impeach him? The moment you are charged, the threshold for political accountability is achieved. There's a gap there. Why not holding, holding them accountable? The second is the public. Politicians are mobilizing part of the public, a section of the public, and the public are not, is not resisting that mobilization, that they are framing the war on corruption as if it's a political witch hunt against a section of Jubilee government. And you see Senator Murkom tweeting about it all the time. And he said, he attacked uh, Governor uh, Mutua and said, you are politically correct. That's why you're not in court. Mm. When, when, when Senator Murkom uh, tweets something like that, he undermines the effort by the DPP. He undermines that uh, interagency committee. He undermines the constitution by politicizing the one graft. Mm -hmm. And the public has not called him out. Mm -hmm. Neither has the media. The lawyers. You know, we have not interrogated the role of lawyers in aiding justice and also aiding the war on corruption. Fair enough. Every accused person is presumed innocent and is entitled to legal representation. Right. To what extent? I'm a litigation lawyer. Duncan is a litigation lawyer. We know these things. To what extent are lawyers sabotaging the war on graft? That debate is going unattended. Mm. I don't want to deepen it here because it's too complex and too deep, mm -hmm. but I would like you to invite the leadership of the LSK to come and explain the role lawyers are taking in supporting the war on graft. Lawyers cannot limit their role mm -hmm. in just 
offering defense services, defense counsel services, mm -hmm. that the law says every person has a right to legal counsel, so I'm a lawyer in this case, I'm offering, they must have a more nuanced role mm -hmm. in supporting the war on graft. Okay. Are they doing that? Okay. That's an ongoing debate. Are they doing that? That's the question. Duncan, your response, uh, right uh, 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 in, Indeed, I would, uh, I would again not agree totally with my learned <laughs> colleague on that, yeah. because uh, the, the Constitution is very clear, and he's the one who told us each of these articles of the Constitution are, are germane. You cannot read it outside the other or say that this is superior, uh, say for Article 25. What the Constitution says is, is that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. That presumption of innocence is a very key thing because tomorrow it is not uh, Governor Waititu or Governor Nasonko. Tomorrow it will be me or even him being taken to court. It will apply and that is when we'll feel the effect of this. So that what Nelima is telling us is that we should be very happy for us to know that there is a war successful on corruption. It is when we see Governor Sonko at, in committee having been convicted, Governor Waititu, all these other big shots. That is far from it. Mm. It is a process. It is not just an event. Yeah. And the process is m as important as that particular conviction and the law itself. And if you mess up the process a bit, what I always say is that it is the easiest way for any other lawyer to pick it up mm. and prefer an appeal and it will be successful on the fact that the process in terms of fair hearing was actually interfered with. Not even the fact that you stole or you didn't steal, your hand was in the cookie jar or not, it doesn't matter in law. That particular process is about your rights and your rights are actually enshrined and clearly in the constitution. Yes. So that if you say that it's about seeing people, that stops being a prosecution. It becomes a persecution. Mm. And if we start with persecutions, let me tell you, we lose it. Tomorrow it will be journalists being persecuted. The other day it will be lawyers and lawyers have been persecuted in the past and that will not be where we want to go. Yeah. As lawyers, and, and I always uh, tell people, we go to court. This judiciary, you're being told, is the weakest link by my, by my colleague panelist. It is not. The judiciary has been structured to be the, the weakest link in terms of the, what the executive is doing, not in terms of the constitution, the constitutional architecture and design. Yeah. Structured but intentionally? Yes, intentionally. Let me tell you, and that is what Maraga was saying. It was not all about the car. That is if someone wants to look at lipstick and hairdressing, but you lose sight of the message. The message was very clear that they are actually suffering. Let me tell you, the uh, judiciary has created a division specifically to deal with this, both the High Court and, and uh, the Chief Magistrate's Court. There are judge, uh, judges and magistrates there. But let me tell you, even in terms of these amounts that they want in the budget, it is to expand. Some of these magistrates don't even have chambers to sit in. Remember, as much as we are, and that's what I was saying, we are a country with uh, governed and uh, where many people have bad manners, which we have legislated. So this turns out to, to be numerous cases in court. In other countries, and I saw yesterday, there's a country where people don't lock their shops because people know that it is wrong to steal. Here, chicken thieves, someone who has looked at you badly, someone who has touched you when he was walking, it is a crime. They are all being hounded to court. These courts do not have the capacity, remember. And that is why you even see the DPP has come back and said, yeah. now I want to follow plea again. Because it is not possible to prosecute all these cases, right. even from the pro DPP's side itself, leave right. alone the court. Therefore, the court will not churn out these particular judgments and mm -hmm. convictions mm -hmm. at the rate that we would want because of these realities. Okay.